Hey guys, welcome to this very special series of home improvements. We're going to be showing you how to convert this horrible, mahogany, outdated, dirty, yucky cupboard, old fashioned. You nasty. Yeah, basically disgustingness into this beautiful white soft closing doors. That's right, there's no more of that banging noise. These beautiful drawers that are cleaner from the inside. Come take a look. Wow, so much cleaner. And it's got a beautifully soft, glossy white finish. And I'm told here in Australia that only the posh people have white cupboards. <laughs> so that's good. I'm gonna be showing you how this all by yourself for under a hundred Australian dollars. Yes, that's right. You can do this home improvement all by yourself with just a few household materials and a few bits and pieces from the shops all right here and stay tuned because the most exciting thing is after we've converted this into uh, our beautiful whiteness we're going to change our kitchen as well this massive project as you can see it's also got that disgusting mahogany look to it, it looks old it looks outdated we're going to zap it all together i'm going to show you how to do it in a few simple steps <laughs> step you will need a screwdriver and some cleaning solution now I have chosen sugar soap which is good for cleaning those dusty greasy disgusting dirt on your cupboard the first step you'll need to do is take apart your doors and your drawers and then give them a good old clean with some sugar soap let's get cracking all right so the first step is to take off the hinges and unscrew them yeah and here and that way that will release the door so that you can take it apart and wash it. So now that you have successfully taken off your doors and removed the hinges, because we're going to be converting those hinges into soft close hinges, it's now time to remove the drawers, take them apart, and then give them that all important wash. Whew, this is hard work. <laughs> Ew. remove the handles from the drawers it's time now to break apart the actual door itself from the drawer now this is important if you want to get a nice clean finish to your paint job you can alternatively just paint around the drawer but I don't think it looks as nice if you're gonna do it you might as well do it properly now from previous experience from the last cabinet I know that these people have actually the people before us who installed these initially have put fine nails in the middle of these to hold the two compartments together so it's going to need a bit of brute force a hammer and a flat screwdriver to break it apart and then we're ready for the next step The doors are now off from the actual drawers. Just take care because there may be some uh, sharp needles or sharp um, screws pointing out. So the next step to do is to give this all a really good clean. Now, if you do want to have a nice clean finish, I do suggest taking off any markings or any glue markings such as this paper and um, these tags as well the company name on them. You can do that by using a scraper and some sugar soap just to soften it up and I'll show you how. It's also really important to remove any needles that are sticking out such as this one by using a plier to take that out. So join me as we take our next step on preparing the boards ready for cleaning and painting. Let's go. So now that you've done that step, it's now time to prepare your doors. Now the doors themselves obviously have handles that need taking out 
and it also has fixtures from the hinges now this won't look very nice if you do paint over them so you do need to re remove them um i'm going to leave these two on i'll be leaving these two on just to give support to my existing cabinet but the handles i will be certainly removing oh let's go And there you have it. So now all of your doors are ready. It's time to move on to the cleaning phase and then we'll get going. <sighs> How to save money on your cabinets. Do it yourself. Welcome back. <laughs> so I hope you had a nice break. Now it's time to clean the cupboards to prepare them for the next step. So I'm gonna pop on my lovely cleaning gloves. Now it's really, really important. It's really important to clean your cupboards thoroughly. This is so that all of the paint will stick onto it, the primer will stick onto it, and the actual gloss itself will stick onto it as well. So take some time to clean it thoroughly. So for this cleaning step, I'll be using instant sugar soap, which you can get from your local warehouse or um, B&Q or Bunnings or whatever equivalent. And um, you just spray it directly onto the surface and leave for a minute or so and then you wash it off with some warm water. Okay, it's been a minute or so and now I'm just gonna wash off the surface from the sugar soap. And it's really important to dry it straight away. And then you just need to repeat for all of your surfaces that are going to get painted. So now that you've cleaned up your interiors, your drawers, it's now time to clean the actual doors. So again, same situation, put some sugar spray on it, give it a nice minute or two, let it soak in and then wash it off with some water and let it dry. So how's the cupboards coming along? Well, it is such hard work, but it's enjoyable because I know it's going to end up being really good. The first stage is now complete, which is the cleaning. The next stage will be the sanding, and then it'll be the priming, the priming again, and then the gloss times two. Hard work? Hard work, but worth it. You tired? My energy levels have fallen a little bit, hence the walk. We're going into Surface Paradise just to have some fresh air, and then we're going to get going again. I'm going to get her a Starbucks matcha frappuccino. Yes! And because uh, I saw her getting all sweaty and tired, and I said, you know what? Rather than helping you, because that. <laughs> oh, totally. Woo. Well done for completing the first step of cleaning your cupboards and preparing them ready for the next step. And that step, what is it, may you ask? Well, it's the sanding down step. So all you've got to do now is get uh, sanding paper of 180 and sand down all of your surfaces, following by wiping them clean with a nice white, white cloth. <laughs> And then you're ready to apply your first coat of primer. So I'm gonna get going and sand down all of my surfaces, including the edges as well. Now that you have done your sanding for your main doors and cabinets, it's now time to sand the frame of your cabinet. And we're gonna do this in the same way as before with our 180 grit sandpaper all the way across the area and then just clean it down with some wet towel, clean wet towel and leave it to dry. Just to note, I have got a sanding block underneath my sandpaper. You can actually just go ahead and use this by itself. However, because I've got quite a lot of cabinets and doors to do, I've wrapped around another piece of sanding paper just to help with the grip and also I can just keep moving it around as I go. Okay, let's do it. Alright, now that you have sanded down and cleaned your area so it's nice and soft, 
you will now be able to move on to your next step, which is getting it primed up ready for that gloss. So I'm going to go ahead to take a mini break and show you what to do next. Max Strength Adhesion Primer. Now there's loads out there, but you want to get one that's really good for priming up your laminate. done the doors and the cabinets it's time to paint the frame the same thing applies to this one apply the primer onto the nice clean sanded surface and then leave it to dry perhaps for one or two hours depending on what it says on the paint tin and then recoat it afterwards For those all important fine corners you may not be able to get away with using your roller so i'm using this slanted paintbrush that i got from bunnings and i'm just going to apply the primer onto it making sure that i should go in nice even strokes all the way down the cabinets all right so now that you've primed up your cabinet base or cabinet exterior, I don't know what it's called, you need to obviously, uh, as we did before, make it into a nice neat line with your roller. There you have it, your first touch up for the primer is now complete for your cabinet holding area, your cabinet doors and your drawers as well. So whilst this is drying, I'm going to seize the opportunity to paint the inside of the cabinet area here and also the drawers as well to give them a nice, fresh, clean finish to go with my wonderful new cabinets when it's made in approximately six days. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. For those of you who want to take a break, now is a good chance. Put your feet up, have a cup of tea, admire the amazing work that you have just done. Well done you. Paint the inside first because you can see it's really yellow and if you can see it but it's super yellow on the inside it looks horrible and outdated and it just needs a nice freshening up that's so much better already so much better already Catching up seizing the opportunity. Well. So as you can see, night has fallen, which means that my paint, my first coat of the primer, has now dried. It's touch dry and it's ready for its second coat. That's pretty exciting because the next thing I'm gonna do is leave it overnight, because it's almost night time now. I'm gonna flip it over in the morning and then do the first coat of the other side and then the second coat thereafter. Oh, it's a long process, but I promise you it'll be well worth it after you finish and you'll feel that you've saved thousands, literally thousands of dollars or pounds or whatever. All right, let's get going. Welcome back. So it has now been about, well, well over six hours since I did my second coat for this laminate primer. As you can see, well, you can remember what it looked like before completely white that brown horrible color is almost gone however the other side is still nasty yuck yes that's right this is now this amazing <laughs> so it's time to do the other side of all of these and again pretty much the same thing so after we primed up our surface surface we have sanded it down wiped it clean and now it's ready to apply the first coat of primer leave it to touch dry and then reapply the second coat and hey presto you're ready for your final touches It's just been raining outside. 
guys, I've come in to take my lovely pieces of wood and they're a bit wet but I'm going to dry them up ready for my next and penultimate coat of paint which is pretty exciting so stay tuned. I'm not going to do it right now because it is a bit wet and rainy but I'm going to do it when the sun shines. I'm going to show you how awesome they're going to look. Oh I can't wait! <laughs> so here we have, oh it's a bit wet so I'm just going to dry it up. So this is what the drawers look like after two coats of primer. As you can see, that colour, that nasty, yucky colour has now gone. So what I'm going to do is once it's stopped raining, I'm going to sand it down a little bit, put the first coat of gloss on it, leave it to dry overnight, and then I'm going to apply the second gloss on the second um, side. Or I might just do one side two coats and the other side two coats after. But I'm pretty excited because I can see now that it's starting to get there. Don't worry too much if you do see like some patches because all of that will just completely go after your last two coats of paint. Hang in there guys, you are saving literally thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds or dollars or whatever by painting this yourself. So keep up the good work and it'll be worth it in the end, I promise. <laughs> now I'm really excited for this next step because this is when it actually starts to look like the final product. Yay! And all of your hard work will be much well rewarded. For this next step, you will need some fine sandpaper. I'm going for a 600 grit. You will need a wet paper towel to dry off all of that sandy stuff that you sanded off. And you'll need some laminate paint. Now I've gone for White Knight laminate paint, which is white gloss edition. You can go for any other competing brand, but I've gone for this one because I've used it previously and it looks great. So here we go. So the first thing you're gonna do is sand down all of your surfaces, then wipe the excess with a wet paper towel and then you're ready for paint. Let's go. using my paintbrush in approximately six hours I'm going to wrap it up in some tight plastic bag so it doesn't go hard and I'm going to unwrap it again ready for use later on. <gasps> wow it's been six hours and it's now time for my second coat. Ooh, nice and dry so I cannot wait to show you what this looks like. This is before we started. Ta-da! Really kind of bland and dull and not very excited and this is after the first coat of gloss. As you can see, it's shiny, it's looking fantastic, it looks amazing. And there you have it, the second coat is now complete. I'm going to wrap up my paint brushes and my roll in a plastic bag and I'm going to wait until tomorrow because six hours needs to pass until I can do the other side of the cabinet. I'm really looking forward to it. I've only got another 12 hours left of painting. <laughs> and then I'm going to hang the doors back up, put the fresh brand new soft close hinges and the fresh brand new handles as well. I can't wait to show you this magical transformation. So stay tuned and good night for now. See, I help too. Wow, just look at how shiny these look. They are so shiny, so immaculate. I am so, so happy with the outcome. So this is after two coats of primer, followed by two coats of gloss, back and forward and can you just imagine that that you is now this? <laughs> I wow. know, I know. Take a look. It's as though this was always this color. The fantastic thing about really doing a good job is it looks so natural. It's as though you've paid a thousand dollars for it to be like this. Alrighty, so I've got my brand new shiny handles that I got from Bunnings. And with this comes obviously one handle, which is a nice chrome 
finish, which is beautiful. And it comes with two screws to put the handles in. Now, these screws are actually adjustable, and that means that you can cut them to size. So obviously, these are really quite long at the moment. In order to cut them down to size, what you need to do is measure them against your cupboard door, the thickness of that, and then you want to leave about a half a centimetre and that can actually feed in to the handle itself. So I'm going to cut the nail down to the second ridge over here. So I'm going to just cut it down with my ply cutter, like so. And you just have to really give it a big squeeze all of the strength you have. It's a good workout. And then what I'd suggest is once you've given it one good squeeze, rotating it 90 degrees and give it another good squeeze. It does take a bit of time and I would say maybe get someone's help if you need to, if you have got not strong arms, but it does work. And it'd definitely be worth it because I'll show you once you've made enough of an indent, then all you do is grab an extra pair of pliers and then just bend it. So I'll show you what I mean. So now that I've done it about four times on each side, I'm just gonna hold it with one side and with the other side with another pair of pliers and just bend it around. Oh, gotta be a bit ambidextrous for this. <laughs> or you can always obviously ask for help if you're struggling. And just bend it and you can see whoo, it's bent and it's broken there we go and there you have it your brand new handle is fitted nicely it's nice and sturdy it's in a nice straight line because i haven't had to drill the holes myself and at the back you can see two fresh um, nails at the back and i'm just going to go ahead and do the next one and show you what the outcome is I like it already. I think the white gloss and the chrome finish go really well. It just looks beautiful. It looks like a proper, clean, nice bathroom cabinet. So the next step then is to put on your hinges, which can be an absolute nightmare. The first time I did it, it did take a good day just to work out how to use hinges. So I'm hoping that with this tutorial, I can make it much easier for you so that you can see that actually it's not a big deal and actually it's not as bad as what it seems. So here are the soft close hinges that I have purchased from Bunnings. Um, there are loads of different types and you really have to be careful with the sizes as well. Make sure you take your old hinges and you measure it up yourself because there's loads of different things like the crank, I think it's called. I don't know what it's called. It's like the crank, the millimeters, the whatnot. Basically, I opted for the standard version, which is, um, I think, 105 degree opening nickel plated hinge. <laughs> I think the crank is this thing over here, but let me know in the comments. I mean, I just, I've used this before and I know it works for me, so I would advise you to go and speak to your local friendly Bunnings person to find out what is best for you. Now, the hinge comes in two parts. So there's this part and then there's this part as well, which comes off if you press the button, like so, and it detaches. So this part is onto the main cabinet and this part screws onto the door. So for now, I'm gonna keep them both up, applied together so that I've got my sizes right. And I'm gonna just screw in the this part into my cabinet. this door is not obviously aligned so I'm going to try and work out using the manual instructions how to correct the hinges. Now there is a way inside the manual it should tell you if you want to go horizontal or vertical adjustment which screws to uh, screw. So I'm just going to have a little play around and see where we go to. So the 
hinges are now on and I've adjusted them. So look at the instructions that you have. However, for my particular hinges, which I've used Prestige soft close hinges, um, you need to adjust, if you need to, you can adjust the depth, the height, and the vertical drop of the doors by three main screws. And I'll just take you through those screws right now. So the first screw to look at the uh, depth of the door, you need to loosen this one and move it and then keep moving the door in and out to see how well the depth is adjusted. In order to look at the side adjustment, you need to move this one. And then for any vertical adjustments, you need to loosen these screws here. What does that actually mean? Well, good point. So as you can see, this one is slightly higher than the more? other. Yeah. Yeah, looks good. Looks really good, that's perfect. That's perfect. There you have it guys, that's how to adjust your hinges in literally five seconds. Oh wow, it does look nice, doesn't it? It's so much nice and brighter. I can't believe that was your old, like, disgusting, ew, 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 nasty, nasty, mahogany, disgusting, I had like stains everywhere. That looks so much fresher, so clean. That's gorgeous. Welcome back, so it's now time to put your cabinetry back together again. Now, I've already done one already because my cupboards are Literally, not only am I working in a tiny, teeny, weeny space, but when I first started out, they were so wonky and they're an absolute nightmare. So I've developed a little hack and I'm gonna tell you what I did. So after the paint has dried, I've left it for a few days to cure. It's really important for your paint to cure. Curing means that the paint gets harder and then it gets less, um, less knocks and less scratches to it. So that's vital to this. Now, in order to line up my cupboard with my actual door frame, it's really hard because as you can see, the holes are massive. Like, you'd expect there to be just a really tiny hole, but it's not. There's a really big hole and a tiny hole here, which means that the doors will move around. So in order to combat this, I have stuck on a little bit of double-sided permafix. And then as soon as I take off the cover and as soon as this is in the right place, I can stick it together and then attach the handles on which in my opinion is just so much easier than doing this and trying to work out where to go. Make sure I'm still happy. Now what I'm going to do is to check the third drawer as well. I'm just going to pop it in loosely to make sure that the spacing is all right. Yeah, I'm happy with that. There you have it, your brand new updated, renovated toilet is all done. If you've got any tips or comments or any questions, do leave me a, uh, a note down below and stay tuned for the next video where we'll be, oh my gosh, doing the biggest project we have ever done yet, which is renovating our kitchen. And I did this. Thank you.